This video is all about the common ion effect. This is an effect in solubility equilibria caused by an ion in common with the salt that we're interested in the solubility of. And it has to do with increases or decreases in the solubility of an ionic salt when we mess with the concentration of a common ion in one way or another. All of this is grounded in Le Chatelier's principle. So in many ways, we already know how to, for example, do calculations and make qualitative predictions of how common ions will operate. But we're going to look at some examples in this video and formalize things a little bit more, contextualize things in the context of solubility equilibria using terminology that we've used to date, like ion product and solubility product and that sort of thing in this video. All right, so let's get into it. So the common ion effect, what is it? Well, it's right here on this box. It is an effect wherein the solubility of a salt, MX, or an acid, HX, is lower in a solution containing either the cation, M, M+, plus, or H3O+, plus in the case of an acid, or the anion XN-, minus in the case of the salt, than in pure solvent. So in other words, the common ion dissolved in the solution lowers the solubility of the salt or acid. And here, the dissolved ion, be it the M cation or the X anion or H3O+, plus, is what we mean by a common ion. It's an ion in common with the ions in the salt. This is why this is called the common ion effect. Now, this is entirely rooted in Le Chatelier's principle, as we'll see a, bit, a little bit later on the slide. And there are related effects of common ions. For example, consumption or production of a common ion via a chemical reaction that also fall under the umbrella of the common ion effect. And at the root of all of these is Le Chatelier's principle, the idea that this common ion appears in the dissolution equilibrium equation, and so it can shift the equilibrium one way or another as it's formed or consumed. Or if we think about using a solution in which that ion is already to dissolve to prepare a solution of a salt of our interest. So take, for example, silver iodide. And I'm realizing now this says silver chloride. Let's think about silver iodide solid dissolving in water to form Ag plus and I minus. So QSP for this dissolution process is the concentration of silver plus times the concentration of I minus. And KSP is equal to the value of QSP at equilibrium. Now, if we imagine we're at equilibrium, we've got a saturated solution with additional silver iodide sitting at the bottom of the beaker. Addition of silver ion or iodide ion to that solution via some other salt with an innocuous or spectator counter ion like potassium or lithium iodide or silver nitrate or something along those lines would cause precipitation of silver iodide since that would push QSP greater than KSP and promote precipitation as the system returned to equilibrium. In pure solvent, let's imagine that we can dissolve X moles of AGI per liter of solution. This is what we've called the molar solubility of AGI in pure water, for example. This means that KSP is equal to X times X, since we get one mole of AG plus for every mole of AGI and one mole of I minus for every mole of AGI. So KSP is equal to X times X or X squared. But what happens if we don't dissolve the silver iodide in pure water, pure solvent, but start with a solution that has some silver cation or iodide anion dissolved in it already? In fact, not as much silver iodide solid can be dissolved in the solution. And we can prove that very easily using ideas we've laid out already here. So let's imagine, for example, that we started with a solution in which the iodide concentration was already greater than zero. Maybe we've got a solution of sodium iodide in water at some concentration. It's very easy to show that dissolving X moles per liter of silver iodide in that solution would cause precipitation of silver iodide. In other words, not all of it would dissolve. This is another way to think about this. And this implies that the molar solubility is lower than X as a result of the initial iodide present in the solution from the start. And to prove this, well, let's think about what QSP is right after we've tried to dissolve the silver iodide in the iodide solution. 
at a concentration of x moles per liter. Under that situation, we've added x moles per liter of silver cations, so QSP is equal to x times the iodide concentration after the addition, which is x plus the initial concentration of iodide. Now, the initial concentration of iodide, based on the way we set this up, was greater than zero initially. So this product must be greater than x squared. This means that QSP is greater than KSP. We previously showed that KSP is equal to x squared, and this implies that silver iodide will precipitate. If we're somehow able to manage to get all x moles per liter of silver iodide dissolved, some will precipitate. In practice, what will happen is less than x moles per liter of the silver iodide will dissolve, and we'll end up with excess silver iodide left behind, excess silver iodide solid, undissolved, implying that the molar solubility of silver iodide is lower in this iodide solution than it would be in pure water. That's the, the common ion effect in action. In this problem, we're asked about the effect on the solubility equilibrium of magnesium hydroxide when each of the following solids are added to a saturated solution of MgOH2. So we're interested, for example, in whether we would expect more MgOH2 to precipitate out or MgOH2 to dissolve to a greater extent in the solution. Basically, in the language of fundamental equilibrium concepts, will each of these solids shift the equilibrium, the dissolution or solubility equilibrium of magnesium hydroxide in some way. And so we want to imagine here we've got a system in equilibrium. So we've got a magnesium hydroxide solution that is saturated with additional magnesium hydroxide solid on the bottom so that both precipitation and dissolution can occur with non-zero rate. All right, so the first solid here is MgCl2, magnesium chloride. And actually, before we get into that, let's note that QSP is equal to the magnesium concentration times the hydroxide concentration squared. We're going to be thinking about QSP versus KSP as we work through each of these, and so having that down now will be helpful. All right, for magnesium chloride, well, we've got the magnesium ion in magnesium chloride. So when we dissolve the magnesium chloride in this saturated solution of magnesium hydroxide, we're elevating the magnesium 2 plus concentration. This causes QSP to be greater than KSP, since we are making Mg2 plus concentration bigger. Under those circumstances, based on what we already know about Q versus K, this will cause precipitation of MgOH2 solid as the system returns to equilibrium. What about potassium hydroxide, KOH? Well, that's K plus OH minus. So in adding that solid and dissolving hydroxide in the solution, we're elevating the concentration of OH minus. This causes an increase in the value of QSP over its equilibrium value. This means that once again, QSP is greater than KSP, and this salt will cause precipitation of additional magnesium hydroxide. MgOH2 will precipitate. How about sodium nitrate, NaNO3? Well, we've got Na plus and NO3 minus in that salt. Neither of these is in common with magnesium hydroxide, the ions in that substance. And because there's no common ion, and neither of these ions reacts with Mg2 plus or OH minus, there will be no effect on the, for example, molar solubility of MgOH2 by this salt. What about magnesium hydroxide itself? Now, this one's a bit of a thinker. We're already in a saturated situation, right? We've got a lump of MgOH2 solid at the bottom of the beaker, and we've got the maximum amounts of Mg2 plus and OH minus dissolved in the solution above. Adding more MgOH2 solid actually has no effect on the value of QSP is a really nice way to think about this. MgOH2 does not appear in this reaction quotient. So adding more solid will have no effect on the value of QSP. This means that after the addition of magnesium hydroxide, the system will still be in equilibrium. The solution is already saturated and it will remain as such. So the addition of more magnesium hydroxide solid has no effect on the position of equilibrium. This is really nice from a practical point of view. This means to pre prepare a saturated solution, all you have to do is dump solid and stir it up and, and get it stirring and be sure you're at equilibrium, and the amount of extra solid that you have at the bottom has no effect on the concentrations in the solution 
above. So you can keep adding solid until you have a nice hefty amount of solid excess in the bottom and you'll know you're at saturation conditions.